All my jerseys are retired people or guys we just traded. Uh, what's going on? You're watching Panthers post of Phil Perkins. Let's preview the Panthers taking on the beat up Bengals. What's going on? You're watching Panthers post of Phil Perkins. Thanks for joining. We are kind of in the midway point of the season, and the Panthers, I think more than any other team, has gone through almost like a rebuild within the rebuild. Like it was the first couple weeks. Pretty demoralizing, not going to lie, seeing how we expected this team to be great or much better, much more improved in the offseason. And then only for drastic changes to be happening, literally fire the head coach, let go of the most popular player, let go of Robbie Anderson. And then now it, this seems to be more and more like the team we thought we were going to be getting. And so as they head into this next matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals, the beat up Bengals, I said in the intro, who were humbled on Monday night. So it's on a short week for them uh, against the Cleveland Browns, who can't say much. They defeated the Panthers. Um, you know, they, they take on the Panthers at home. It's the Queen City battle. I still don't understand. Well, I guess the Queen kind of ruled everything. So I'm sure there's a lot of Queen Cities. Ironically, not a lot of Queen Cities in Canada. We're still in the uh, still in the Commonwealth. You guys aren't. Uh, either way, that's some history for you. Um this normally on the schedule, when I first looked at the schedule, uh, I thought the Panthers would lose this game. Mind you, this was the, you know, these are the Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow-led Cincinnati Bengals who had just been in the Super Bowl. They, too, are kind of waking up a little bit late. Bit of a hiccup against the Cleveland Browns. Um, so I thought this was 100% going to be a loss uh, for the Panthers. Now, in my mind, it makes me think, you know, they had a tough, emotional, divisional game, kind of like the Panthers did, away from home. Now they're back in the friendly confines of whatever their stadium's called. And as I said before they fired Matt Rule, that the Panthers are kind of that get-right team. You know, like, hey, you know what, they're in a funk, kind of like the Los Angeles Rams. Bitten a funk, you know, they're going to get right against the Panthers. That's what happened. Um, and, you know, the Falcons... Even though it was a very close game, the most exciting game of the year so far in the NFL, you know, the Falcons got beat up. Next game, you know, get right against the Panthers. Uh, so I thought maybe, you know, this could be a get right game for the Cincinnati Bengals. However, I think the Panthers got them at the right time. And sure, injuries are part of the game. The Panthers had serious injuries the last couple of games when they didn't have their losses. And so the Cincinnati Bengals have arguably the much bigger loss because as we saw on Monday night, their offense is kind of reliant on Jamar Chase playing. And he's not going to be playing because he's got an injured hip. He's going to be out for a couple of weeks. And that is, and normally a security blanket for a young quarterback is the tight end. For him, it's his college teammate in Chase. And Joe Burrow, couple that, his number one target's gone, with the fact that his offensive line, though personnel improved, hasn't been coached up to continue to protect him or even start to protect him properly. This was kind of an issue. And, you know, he went up against the Cleveland Browns defense, specifically their defensive line, coupled with our defense. Mind you, our defensive pass rushers is really just Brian Burns right now. But you got Brian Burns, you got Frankie Louvre, you got J.C. Horn. You know, got a stout, young defense that is staying intact after the trade deadline. I think he's going to have some problems. Today, Shaq Thompson told reporters in down in Charlotte that, you know, one thing that Steve Wilkes has done is that he is, and we, we mentioned this, the fact that he's a Carolina Panther previous coaching staff with the Ron Rivera era. He's from Charlotte, so he knows the team. He knows what they're about. He knows the history, like personally. They, one thing Shaq Thompson said that Steve Wilkes has done is that he brought back to the Carolina Panthers the way they should be, the way that they're known. You know, hard-nosed football. And, and you're getting that affirmation, and you're getting people saying the same thing from the team, not just the players, but like Bradley Bozeman's wife saying the same-ish. Like, you know, like smash-mouth football in the South, you know, trench warriors, all this stuff. And so I, I don't know where these people were. I know they're just all being professionals, which is good. But you didn't get him one leak. You didn't get one leak from anyone in the coaching uh, from the locker room. From all accounts, from beat writers there, they said that there's a great locker room. They like Matt Rule a lot. Um, but I guess there's something that, you know, it's like you, you had something and you forgot about it because it was gone for so long. Uh, and then now you get rekindled with it. And you're like, oh, snap. I used to be like that. I used to be. Me, that used to be fun. I used to be about that. Now, you know, back then, like, I don't know who that guy was. Kind of like when you're in a bad relationship and, you know, you, you got a girl or a guy and you don't see your boys anymore. You stop watching sports. You start doing things that you like. And then, you know, once that all falls apart, you're like, oh, shucks. Who was that guy? And that seems like what that's what the Panthers have been. They're with in this weird relationship with, with someone that they, you know, 
maybe had no business being within the first place. And they kind of bought in because they just wanted to be nice and, you know, kind of go with the flow and you're just being a good person. And then you realize once that is done and it goes its natural direction where it probably should have gone a while ago, you realize that, wow, that was a really weird relationship where I was just not myself. And it seems like the Panthers are finding themselves now, not just on defense, but on offense as well. I think someone like Deontay Foreman is perfect for that, as we said in the last uh, episode when they narrowly lost to the Falcons. That, But you got a guy who is embodying the Carolina Panthers mantra. It's literally keep pounding. What does this guy do? He literally pounds the rock down defender's throat the way he should have been since week one. Um, but he and the defense are embodying that. And you want to be a team that people are afraid to go up against. And, you know, you don't want to tackle Deontay Foreman in the fourth quarter. And that was the reason why I thought they picked him up. Because if you have to deal with the fast and explosive Christian McCaffrey in the first And second quarter, imagine dealing with him and Deontay Foreman in the last two quarters of the game. You'd be exhausted. You just give up. So that is he is embodying what the Carolina Panthers have been, forgot, and then now have reacquainted themselves with. And I think he's also going to have a monster game. I'm not sponsored by any betting companies. That'd be sweet. But I did make a bet that the Panthers uh, are going to cover this game, potentially win. I think they're going to score more than 17 points. And I also think that Deontay Foreman is going to find the end zone yet again. The dude is hungry. Like I mentioned in previous episodes, this is like week three for him. He's been rested for whatever reason after picking him up in the offseason. The, the Panthers just were not playing him. And, you know, same offensive coordinator. And you're, you're calling the games differently. I don't know if Christian McCaffrey was really that much of a focal point. Like, I mean... It's, it's wild, but either way. Um, yeah, so I think the Panthers are getting him at a good time with injuries with Jamar Chase. The defense has always been playing hot. You know, uh, Dante Jackson getting a pick, his second pick uh, in the year so far. He hasn't been traded. You know, Brian Burns has not been traded. Shaq Thompson has not been traded. So everyone kind of feeling kind of galvanized. Like, hey, you know what? This is the unit we're going to roll with. Panthers got a good chance of winning this game away. Uh, currently on Thursday Night Football, I know... I'm just like you guys. I'm kind of in this weird bouncing point where I want them to win, but I also want them to to draft well. Um, And I know there's the argument that we literally have the first and third overall pick in the 2018 draft, and look where they are right now. Um, But still, you still want to put yourself in the best position to succeed. I think the Panthers, right now, Thursday Night Football at Houston is giving the Eagles a hard time, but it looks like they're kind of losing their grasp on that. Uh, So it looks like the Houston Texans will maintain... Uh, it looks like the second overall pick, uh, Detroit's taking on the Packers. I got a weird feeling they can win that game. I think it's at Ford field. Um, but I think the Panthers are going to win this game. I really do. Uh, I'm allowed to have a mulligan, you know, there's a preseason shit changes almost midway through the season. Things have changed. I think this team is galvanized kind of like I was mentioning before with the defense. Um, you know, as I mentioned before that Joe Person article, they want, they want to play for Steve Oaks. They want him to be the head coach of this team, give him the best opportunity. If he's not the head coach of this team, maybe for another team. Um, and I think PJ is just, they clearly have trust in him. He had, he had a heavyweight fight against the Atlanta Falcons. Just what, even according to Patrick Mahomes, one of the greatest throws ever, uh, in the NFL on the move, you know, and just unbelievable catch by DJ Moore, who should not have been penalized. Uh, but I think. I think PJ is getting more comfortable with the offense, with the skilled players. I think they're more comfortable with PJ letting it fly, which he might have to do against the Bengals. I know there's no Jamar Chase, but they still got Tyler Boyd. Uh, they still got T. Higgins. They still got Joe Mixon. They got Hayden Hurst. So they, they got guys on their team. Maybe after a week of practice, they figure it out how to adapt without uh, without Jamar Chase, kind of like the same way the Panthers had to learn to adapt without Christian McCaffrey. So who knows? In the NFL, it's not for long, and maybe the Bengals get their shit together and have a get-right game against the Panthers. But I think our defense is going to make it too tough for them to gain their footing, literally, in, in terms of Joe Burrow's case. And I think our offense is is slowly finding itself, uh, its own identity, off the back of Deontay Foreman. And then when they're so keyed in on 33, it allows P.J. to make those simple throws. And then when he has to uncork, he has the confidence to do so. And he clearly his building chemistry with guys like DJ Moore and Tommy Tremble, of all people, who is catching touchdowns. Uh, also, the emergence of Terrace Marshall. Got one LSU Tiger down, and he got his former teammate, former national champion Terrace Marshall, suddenly now getting more and more plays for this team, more and more trust. Uh, again, he's been on this team. Why he hasn't been played, you can't tell me it's just Robbie Anderson. I don't know what it was, but 
you know, the emergence of Terrace Marshall, like DJ Moore finally eaten out there, and and then Deontay Foreman, the, the offense is looking a, l- a lot more balanced each and every week. So I think the Panthers are in a good spot to win this game. I say they're going to win 23 to 18 or 23 to, no, I'm going to say 23 to 20 because all these games have been close, especially in the fourth quarter. You get some back end points there. So the Panthers are going to win 23 to 20. And we're going to have that reaction so Sunday night. It was a little bit late last week because I had my cousin's daughter's first birthday uh so this one is going to be rapid quick when it's going to happen maybe go live talk about it especially if the panthers win get all the hype meters on the chat uh so yeah let me know what you guys think the predictions are going to be for sunday queen city battle i need an explanation on that i already know why it is in charlotte but cincinnati why i don't even think the queen's been to cincinnati 